everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing really, really well. A big warm welcome if you're new here and thank you so much to you all for joining me. Fashion and style are really personal things, of course, and I always say more than anything, wear what you love and wear what makes you happy. Now, in my view, one of the most exciting things about fashion is picking and choosing what's right for you and what you feel comfortable in for your current lifestyle. But you know, sometimes there are styles and trends that may be a little bit tricky to pull off as we get a bit older. So this video is definitely not about rules of what to wear and what not to wear as such, but I'm just offering my own ideas and suggestions of things that you might like to consider avoiding or embracing. So if you feel that your wardrobe is looking a little bit tired, there's some fun inspiration for you for what's wearable from the current summer trends and what might not be. <laughs> Number one is raffia. A great raffia bag or belt even, I think really shouts summer and is a really lovely addition to a summer wardrobe. And if you carry a raffia bag or a basket, it always looks a bit as though you're on holiday, doesn't it? They sort of give you carefree beach vibes, youthful, but not too girly girly. Now the fashion runways for summer this year were filled with raffia. You know, there were bags, belts, shoes, all in straw. And one of the things that I love about raffia is that they can give some great textural contrast to an outfit as well. So for example, raffia can really add contrast and interest to a simple summer look of perhaps light linen outfit or a tan colored dress. You may not want to style it like this though, or is that just me? <laughs> but they are so versatile, they pretty much go with anything. They've really evolved quickly from the French local market basket look to something that can look quite sophisticated and is really contemporary too. And you can pick them up fairly cheaply too. Places like Marks and Spencers, they do beautiful ones, Mango as well. Or there's a slightly smarter one uh, like this one, the crossbody straw bag, this is from H&M. And Amazon too does some really cute little straw bags. Or you can go for one which is a little bit more, let's say pricey and get serious style like these from Cezanne, absolutely beautiful as well. Or you could go for this lovely bag from H&M as well with the tan accents, which looks really designer and is so versatile. Now in my look one, I'm just gonna show you uh, an H&M straw shopper bag and how it can be incorporated into, into a basic summery look. I love this relaxed look. It's so easy to pop on in the summer. It's a loose shirt, loose trousers with a straw shopper is in my opinion, easy everyday chic. Of course it helps that I've chosen a really classic look here to go with the raffia. The striped shirt and the tailored ivory trousers. I really think that this juxtaposition between slightly smarter clothes and the casual raffia bag works really well and it's such an easy look to adapt to whatever you have in your wardrobe as well. So for me raffia is definitely something that would add to our wardrobes rather beautifully. The next summer trend that's out there, on the other hand, might not. Number two <laughs> is mini skirts. I honestly think that while age is just a number and who am I to say what you can or can't wear, I just feel that micro mini skirts, certainly with bare legs, um, are not really the most flattering look for us ladies over 50. So for me, mini skirts, micro minis that is, are a trend to avoid. And especially if they're tight and let's say neon pink. <laughs> and if you're worried about your knees, you may feel a bit self-conscious. Now I'd love to know what you think ladies, so please do feel free to drop your comments into the section below this video. We have such a wonderful community of very active ladies on this channel. But I also think it depends on what we mean by mini or by short. You know, they're short and then there's micro mini. And I think it's the micro minis that really I'm talking about and that should be considered very carefully. While short is another story really, and it does depend on how comfortable you feel in them. In the winter time, for example, I do think that a knee length skirt or just above the knee can look fabulous with opaque tights. And otherwise in the summer, skorts are really great as well. So if you're looking for something short, a little bit more mature, they're wonderful, or midi length or maxi length, of course. And if you're feeling particularly risque, why not add one with a split? Okay, the third fashion trend, which you may have noticed has already come off the catwalks and leapt into the high street shops, is my number three, waistcoats or vests. Waistcoats have made a huge comeback recently and are really on trend. But whether they're on trend or not, to be honest, I really love the vibe that a waistcoat gives to an outfit. It gives that tailored sophistication and a kind of chic feel, but it's really cool, literally, and easy to wear. 
and waistcoats are perfect to dress up or down of course being equally at home with denim or linen as they are with a pair of tailored trousers and I think that wearing a waistcoat for drinks or dinner or a night out with friends is a great way to hit that perfect spot between casual and dressy too and they're pretty effortless as I'm going to show you here in my look too. So in this look, I've gone relaxed but tailored and monochrome. The waistcoat is from Goelia, the tailored trousers are pretty cheap actually from H&M, beautiful. And I think the combination looks elegant and considered too. You know, you could wear it with a variety of footwear as well, from heels, even to sneakers if you wished, and it were modern and contemporary. I've teamed it with gold jewelry, the same that I'm wearing here, this is Monica Vinida, for a fairly minimalist look, and Michael Kors white strappy sandals, which are really versatile, they're beautiful. Okay, on to another summer trend that's, well, trending, and I'd love your views on this one. Number four is roses. I love roses. I love rose gardens. I love bouquets of roses. Don't get me wrong, but like this? Hmm. Apparently, this Alexander McQueen dress was inspired not only by roses, but also by the female anatomy. Just makes me feel a little bit nauseous, to be honest. I don't know about you. Um, and I can't actually see myself going to the local supermarket in any of these either. So for me, the roses theme is one to avoid, very sadly. Um, I think it's a pity, though, because reduced down to a pretty print, it could work really well. But I've yet to see a brand which has come up with a really wearable version. Now, if you have, I would love you to share that down below. OK, now onto something that I think is really, really wearable. Number five is the Polo Club look. This has been all over the runways in various ways, from preppy classics like polo shirts, track jackets to button down shirts. Tennis dresses are really in as well, and not just to play tennis in. With a few tweaks, well, quite a few <laughs> in some cases, I think that this trend can be turned into something very wearable if you extract some of the elements that make it up, such as polo shirts, rugby style shirts, some of the country club attire. It can work really, really well. For example, this beautiful Abercrombie sleeveless polo sweater is the sort of easy fitting classic piece that I think will last a lot longer than the trend, to be honest. And of course, because it's Abercrombie, it's really great quality too. And of course, the quintessential polo shirts from Ralph Lauren. These are always a great addition to any wardrobe, and they're the kind of item that you'll find yourself reaching for pretty often, every year, to be honest. Now, if you take a polo club or preppy look to be a preppy style shirt, this is the sort of perfect piece that can be worn anytime. This is J. Crew oversized stripy shirt. Absolutely adore this. I tend to look a lot like this when I'm working at home. Well, perhaps my shorts aren't quite so sure, uh, but I do love this sort of formula. It's just so easy. And another thing that the runways have shown, which is part of the polo club trend, are slim sneakers. For the second year, slim sneakers are where it's at, ladies. Like these from Mango, these canvas sneakers with leather panels, you don't have to spend a fortune. But they've overtaken those huge, chunky sneakers, which I, for one, am pretty pleased about. Trying to style huge, chunky sneakers and not making the foot like something that you've borrowed from a giant um, is quite a challenge. And I think slimmer sneakers are really way more flattering and wearable for every day. Although, as always, of course, I'd love your views on this and it does depend what you're wearing them with, of course. OK, I think you're going to love my next trend. Haha, <laughs> only kidding. Number six is transparent skirts. And here they are. Enough said. Shall we move on? <laughs> I can't see myself wearing anything like this to the supermarket anytime soon. Can you? <laughs> Apart from anything else, I'd be a bit cold. So, swiftly moving on to my seventh trend to talk about, which is number seven, voluminous A-line skirts. Now, I think that block-coloured A-line cotton skirts are one of the best and most wearable trends that I've seen on the catwalks this summer, and that I think can easily be transported onto the streets. And they come at lots of different price points too. You know, the midi A-line skirts can be picked up pretty cheaply from 20 to 30 pounds, 35 pounds with this Marks and Spencer's one, or also up to a midpoint, I think this is 60 or 70 from Crew Clothing, right up to whatever you want to pay, basically. It's timeless and simple to wear and looks perfect with kitten heels and a blazer if you want to go for a smart look or a vest and sneakers or flip-flops. The key is to find one that is tightly woven, 
fine cotton, which holds that beautiful billowy shape rather than a floaty one, which tends to droop, which is lovely, but it's another kind of a look. Okay, on to my eighth point here, uh, which is all about colour. And it'll be no surprise that I want to talk about butter yellow, because that's what I'm wearing. In fact, there are a couple of colours that are really trending right now. One is crisp white, but the one that I want to focus on, as it's that little bit different, is butter yellow. Personally, I love this shade, and I'm actually sporting it now, as you can see, in this gorgeous waistcoat. This is linen, it's from And Other Stories, and of course it hits two trends in one, doesn't it? The waistcoat and the butter yellow. But I find it so wearable, to be honest. It's just lovely. Anyway, when you look at butter yellow, like I did actually, at first sight, you might think, well, you know, that just wouldn't suit me. Or maybe you think it's a bit wishy-washy, or maybe it's too pastel for you. But you know, you don't have to wear butter yellow as such. Try to look at yellow in a wider sense. It's such a lovely, sunshiny color. A lot of us suit some sort of shade of yellow, you know, from bright canary yellow to mustard yellow. Or if you're a little bit worried about it, perhaps a touch of it in an accessory. And it can be unexpectedly useful too, especially if you combine it with other neutrals like navy, for example, that's a beautiful combination, or with black or with white, very fresh, very summery, very modern. And of course it's perfect with denim too. So I think some form of yellow is well worth considering. Okay, on to my number nine, which I've talked about before. <laughs> it's Mary Jane's. Uh, so I have talked about this before in another video. And whilst I love ballet flats, I'm really sorry, but I absolutely loathe Mary Jane's. I've previously likened Mary Jane's to looking like Alice in Wonderland. Um, and as I said, I'm sure she was a lovely girl, but I have no desire to look like her, especially at my age. And a little rant here about runways, just because something is on the runway and is created by design designers doesn't mean that it's right for us or that we have to wear it. I honestly think that Mary Janes are so unflattering. Apart from making us look like a little girl from a century ago, they foreshorten the leg, cut off the foot in absolutely the wrong place, and they create a horizontal line which makes us look more likely to look, anyway, shorter and more stumpy. Of course, please do share your comments below. And if you love them, please go ahead and just ignore me and continue wearing them. <laughs> now, my last summer trend that I want to talk about is number 10, wide statement belts. Wide statement belts have always felt a little bit 1980s until quite recently, actually, when they've leapt into fashion again. And for me, they're kind of something that you could consider wearing and embracing now because they show personality and they can look really fun. But I also really think they need to be worn with a bit of caution. So they kind of embrace and kind of avoid, depends, because it all depends on our body shape, also on our height and also on our weight. So for example, if you're short-waisted, you might not want to go for a very wide statement belt as that will make your torso look even shorter. And also if you're apple-shaped, for example, you might not want to draw that much attention to your widest part. However, if you're an hourglass lady, lucky you, you could absolutely rock a wide statement belt and look amazing as it would enhance even further your lovely waist. Oh, I wish. <laughs> now, something like this would look absolutely gorgeous on you. This is a very modest version. This is from Revolve, but you know, you can take easily take this sort of a wide, beautiful belt like this. But if you're short-waisted, to be honest, I would stick to a thinner belt, but that doesn't mean it can't be beautiful or adorned or metallic even, or whatever you feel like wearing. So I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. Please, as I said, do consider these summer trends as suggestions. They're not rules by any means, but I do hope that some of them have resonated with you and I hope you've really enjoyed it. So please do give it a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. And if you haven't already subscribed, I'd love to have you join our very active and very wonderful community. So I hope you have an amazing day, an amazing week. Really looking forward to seeing you in a few days for more short and long videos. So please do watch out for them. Lots of love to you all. Bye.